like the look of the Mercedes-Benz SLK? Well, so do I. The great thing about this car is that it's either a coupe or a soft top roadster. And you come in, ah, one thing that I forgot to do and a lot of people forget to do before they can bring the roof down is to come back here and make sure that that cover is in place like so. And then you can let the, uh, the roof do its business. Come in here, press and hold onto this button and it all starts to happen. It's a very clever roof mechanism that Mercedes came up with for the SLK and they're going to use it on the new SL in 2002 too. Now, when the SLK first came out, these cars were selling for overs. In other words, more than the list price. But thankfully, those days are long gone. As you can see, it does take rather a long time. About 30 seconds, not particularly quick. People who buy a Mercedes-Benz buy it because it's got a very strong image. It's a desirable car to have. Plus, you get fantastic build quality, generally anyway, and rock-solid residuals, which is what you're looking for when you're buying a used car. Now, Mercs may not be the sportiest of cars around. Not even their high-performance AMG cars could probably keep up with real sports cars going across country. But this Mercedes SLK makes a reasonable job of having a go. Now, I hate to pigeonhole cars, but the Mercedes-Benz SLK has kind of found itself a bit of a niche in the marketplace. It's become a bit of a girly car, a ladies who lunch car to park outside their favorite wine bar. Nothing wrong with that, but you don't often see blokes driving an SLK. However, you do get that strong image and you can decide, depending on what the day is, whether it's a coupe or a roadster. The very clever uh, retractable hardtop in this car is absolutely brilliantly designed. You do get a bit of wind noise coming in through the gaps here if you're cruising at motorway speeds, but other than that, it's very refined, very quiet, and very, very comfortable. And residuals are very strong. An early P-Reg example will still sell for somewhere around £20,000. Now, when that car was new, it was around thirty grand, so it's lost about 35% of its value in four years, which is very, very good in these sort of economic climates. So what about performance on this car? Well, the 230 compressor will get to 60 miles an hour in about eight and a half seconds, top speed of 140 miles an hour. But my main criticism of this car is that it's very, very easy to spin the wheels at the rear. Of course, it's rear wheel drive. You get traction control on it, but turn that off and you can just get the wheels spinning and spinning away. And even with the traction control turned on, put your foot down hard and you'll find that the traction control does cut in a lot, which is a bit of a pain under heavy acceleration. The SLK cannot match, say, the Elise in the way it handles, but as a top-down cruiser, the SLK is superb and hugely desirable. It's still far too easy to light up the rear wheels and get the traction control kicking in. It still commands strong money on the used car market, and the benefits of a fixed-roof coupe are obvious. 